Some abnormalities of acid-base balance, things that can go wrong, respiratory acidosis. So if you damage your medulla, you will not breathe fast enough and you will get uh, acidosis. How do you damage your medulla? Well, uh, you might, well, it doesn't have to be damaged the medulla necessarily, but right, if you took uh, drugs and alcohol and some combinations, you can affect the medulla. If you received a blow to the medulla, right, you could damage the medulla. Uh, if you just, your heart stops beating, right, then you're not gonna have ex enough blood flow to your medulla for your medulla to work, and you can end up with respiratory acidosis. If you watch your emergency shows, next time you're watching your emergency shows, when they wheel the person into the emergency room because they're, bit, they're in cardiac arrest or, or some other reason uh, they're not breathing, one of the very first things that you'll see that they call for is they'll start an IV drip of sodium bicarb. Does that make sense? Sodium bicarbonate for acidosis, right? It's a base, right? And so it will help to buffer the acid thinly. So um, as far as when somebody overdoses or whatnot, it's not affecting the lungs itself, it's affecting the medulla. It depends on the drug, but almost always, right, these are drugs that are going to affect the brain They're and the medulla. And but there are drugs that can affect the lungs as well. Uh, the opposite, respiratory alkalosis. If you breathe too rapidly, you'll end up with respiratory alkalosis because you're breathing off excessive amounts of carbon dioxide. Uh, nervousness can cause hyperventilation. So people, as they tend to get nervous, they sometimes start to hyperventilate. Uh, and they go into a positive feedback cycle. Right? Nan likes positive feedback cycle, that's what I should say, right? So here's a positive feedback cycle if you start to hyperventilate and you blow off excess CO2, it turns out that the arterioles in the brain are very sensitive to amounts of carbon dioxide. If carbon dioxide levels go up, the arterioles dilate, but if carbon dioxide levels in the brain go down, they're going to tend to constrict. So that if you start to hyperventilate and those arterioles start to constrict, you're going to have less blood flow to the brain and that's going to stimulate the neurons to become more active and you'll become more nervous right because the the arterioles are constricting and as you become more nervous you'll hyperventilate some more which will cause then a, a positive feedback cycle um, years ago I, I had a student uh, unfortunately uh, before we got to this part of the course she was studying for a test and got very nervous. She was sitting in home, started hyperventilating. She called her husband up and said, honey, you gotta come home. I'm really having problems breathing. I need to go to the doctor. I'm hyperventilating. So he rushed home, picked her up, took her to the doctor. That They put her into the, the exam room. The doctor walked in, saw that she was hyperventilating, turned around, came back with a paper bag, said, here, breathe into this and all of a sudden her respirations came back under control and then he said, $40, please. <laughs> and probably increased her respiratory rate again. Uh, so why did the doctor give her a paper bag to breathe in? CO2. CO2, right? So by hyperventilating, you're breathing out too much carbon dioxide. If you take a bag and you breathe into the bag, you're gonna rebreathe your own air, you'll get more CO2. You don't have to have a bag. You can simply cup your hands and rebreathe your own air. Sometimes emergency personnel, when they show up at, at a person's residence and the person's hyperventilating, right? They will get the oxygen tank out and put the oxygen mask on the person and they leave the oxygen turned off, right? And so the person's simply rebreathing their own air and they calm back down. Uh, all right, so uh, rebreathe in your own air. You don't have time to watch old movies right now. Right? Well, here's another old movie for you when you're done with the course. There's an old murder movie with Burt Reynolds in it. It's called Starting Over. It's a pretty funny movie, probably circa early 80s. Uh, and so when you have time, you can watch it. But at any rate, he uh, gets divorced, and then he meets a, a, a 
a woman, they start dating, they've decided to move in together, he's not quite sure about it, and they end up going shopping for furniture, and they're in Macy's somewhere, and uh, he starts hyperventilating. And so he ends up on the bed, hyperventilating on, on the bed, and crowds gathered all around, watching him hyperventilate. Uh, the girlfriend calls uh, his brother-in-law, married to a sister, happens to be a psychiatrist, he comes down, hands him a paper bag, and he leaves in the bag. He also, the brother-in-law says, does anybody here have a Valium? So you know how old this movie is. Uh, probably don't, half of you don't even know what a Valium is. Uh, anyway, it's an anti-anxiety drug. And so everybody started reaching into their pockets and purses and pulling out Valium. It's a funny movie, anyway. All right, uh, metabolic acidosis. So we had respiratory acidosis, respiratory alkalosis. Metabolic acidosis, okay, so Acidosis caused by metabolism rather than respiration. Possible causes, increased lactic acid. So too much lactic acid accumulates. Increased levels of ketones. We know what can ha happen there, right? We talked about ketoacidosis and diabetics, right? So increased ketones. Those are the usual causes. A couple of rare causes, sometimes over ingestion of, of aspirin. Doesn't happen too much, uh, occasionally happens tends to happen more uh, in children than adults. Not so much anymore, but when I was a kid, uh, they had uh, bare baby aspirin, they still have it, but it, it had sugar in it, and in those days, I know this is hard to believe, they didn't have baby fruit <laughs> tops, right? And so what would happen is that every time that a baby would get a fever, in those days they would give them baby bare aspirin, and it didn't take long for toddlers to watch their parents and say, oh, they're putting the candy right there in the medicine cabinet. And so the baby would go in and climb up on the counter and help themselves to the candy, <laughs> chugga, 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 and they would have an aspirin overdose, right? So they get metabolic uh, acidosis. They'd pump, um, they'd pump their stomach. Pumping the stomach, right, to remove the, the aspirin. Um, yeah, the little boy across the street when you did it. That's why I'm such an expert on it. Uh, um, they can also give the person, uh, no matter what the cause here, uh, sodium bicarb, IV. Uh, severe diarrhea can sometimes cause uh, metabolic acidosis for reasons we don't know yet in this class, but we're going to find out that the pancreas secretes sodium bicarbonate, and if you lose excessive amounts of uh, fluid from the uh, digestive system, you lose excessive amounts of sodium bicarb, and you can get metabolic acidosis. So treatment sodium bicarbonate. Metabolic alkalosis, very rare, doesn't happen much. You know, most foods that we eat are acids, uh, so your, your tendency in the body is to tend to accumulate acids. Metabolic byproducts are acids, so metabolic uh, alkalosis, very rare. However, it can happen. Uh, very severe vomiting, so I'm not talking a little vomiting, I'm talking hours and hours and hours of vomiting. Why would that cause metabolic alkalosis? acid loss from the stomach, right? So you're losing acid from the, the stomach. And then occasionally excessive uh, quantities of antacids uh, can cause alkalosis. So if you eat lots and lots of antacids, uh, you might end up with alkalosis. So what are the effects uh, of acidosis and alkalosis? Uh, acidosis will cause depression of the nervous system, uh, putting the person into a coma. We talked about this with ketoacidosis. Uh, alkalosis initially excites the nervous system. After it excites the nervous system and you get too high of a pH, then you can end up with a coma and possible death. One more old movie for you to, to jot down here to watch when you're done with the class. You don't have time now. A very old movie, circa early 70s, called Andromeda Strain. Any of you ever heard? I see yes. a few nods. Read it. Uh, it's an interesting uh, this book, of course, then made into a movie. So in uh, this story, a, uh, a movie, a uh, comet crashes to Earth and brings some virus, infectious virus, into a community, and it kills everybody in the town. I don't want to ruin the movie for you, but I'll, I'll tell you anyway. <laughs> everybody in the town dies. And of course, they bring in the biohazard people to figure out why did everybody die in this town. And they're going through the town, and they find there are actually two people still alive. 
One of them is an alcoholic, an old guy that's an alcoholic, and the other is an infant that has colic. Colic means they cry all the time. Nathan had colic when he was little. Let me tell you what, it's no fun. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so those are the only two survivors, right? The alcoholic old guy and the colicky baby. So they're trying to figure out why did these two people stay alive? It must have something to do with where, where you are here, right? <laughs> Acid base balance. So the colicky baby, what do you think? He's releasing lots of CO2. So they, the baby had respiratory alkalosis because he's crying all the time. Wah, 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 right? <laughs> Hyperventilating. When Nathan had colic, we took him to the doctor and the, the pediatrician, and, and so colic folks is the babies cry. They, they typically, they're it's something they think about their stomach. We don't know, they really don't know, but they're crying all the time and it's really hard to comfort them. Uh, and so we went to the pediatrician and said, well, what's wrong with him? And the doctor looked at, oh, well, he just has colic. I said, well, what can we do? Well, try to find things that come from him. And I said, well, how long will this last? And he said, oh, two or three months. I said, two or three months? Right? Anyway, that would be there to appreciate it. But, uh, all right, so the baby had respiratory alkalosis. The old man was an alcoholic, had developed ulcers, and not a smart thing to do, but for his ulcers, he was taking large quantities of aspirin, trying to stop the pain of the stomach. Not a good thing, right? Because the aspirin contributes to it, but he was taking large quantities of aspirin, which gave him metabolic acidosis. So either extreme on the pH scale saved them from the virus, right? So anyway, when you get a chance, it's an interesting movie. Yeah. All right, acid-base balance bites the dust. <laughs>